If you have kids and you're thinking about getting a Doberman puppy, in my opinion, you simply couldn't make a better choice. You're likely to see some amazing behavioral changes in a Doberman who's living in a house with kids. And I'll cover what instinctual behaviors you're most likely to see. And most importantly, guys, we'll talk about the two main keys of success for successfully raising a Doberman in a house with kids. And look, after talking to countless Doberman owners about this situation, I have discovered that there are two main real common threads uh, that seem to determine if you're gonna be successful with a Doberman in a house with kids or if you're not. So watch this video till the end because if more people knew this information, there would be a whole lot less Dobermans in rescue centers right now. <laughs> so there's a very reputable, well-known Doberman website online. And I'm not gonna name names. I do love this website and I read from them quite a bit. They published an article that said that if you have kids in the house, infants, babies, toddlers, any, any kind of kids, that you should never get a Doberman puppy. And I'm not gonna name names, I'm not gonna name names. Hey guys, I'm editing this video and I changed my mind. I'm gonna tell you exactly who said it. It's the DPCA or the Doberman Pincher Club of America. It's like one of the most well-known authorities on Dobermans. Let me show you what this article says. So on the Doberman Pincher Club of America's website under behavior, there's an article or if you scroll down a ways, you'll see this interesting section <clears throat> right here. And it says, if you have very small children, babies, toddlers, and school-aged children, getting a tiny Doberman is not good. Three exclamation points in all capitals. Baby Dobermans, excuse me, babies and Doberman puppy babies are not a good mix. Three exclamation points in all capitals. Doberman puppies are high energy bundles of sharp toenails and needle tea, two exclamation points and two stars on both sides. Uh, it goes on to say young children can be terrified by the puppies. At the very bottom, it says uh, this could be the start of major behavioral problems and all capitalizations. Wow. Guys, I couldn't disagree more. I, I don't understand. Okay, so it's this mentality that the Doberman is so special that nobody is good enough to own them. But it blows my mind because what makes the Doberman special is that with a little bit of work, they can just absolutely thrive in any situation and, and a, they can absolutely be a kid's best friend. And just to say that, oh, well, it's a little bit hard, takes a little extra work. So let's just tell everybody that um, if you have kids, you should never get a Doberman puppy. I don't know if they're trying to take the lazy way out because they don't want to explain to people how to do it or what, because there are some key points that you need to have a handle on uh, before you raise uh, kids with a Doberman. But um, that couldn't be further from the truth in my opinion. So there are some natural behavioral changes that are pretty instinctual for the Doberman that you're likely to see when they're in a house with kids. Now this is all assuming that you have a very well socialized adult Doberman. So when they're with a very young like baby or infant, a very young child, uh, you're likely to see them to be more focused on the child. When the child's crying, they're going to pay more attention to the kid. Um, they might also lay with the kid quite often um, and give reassuring licks or nuzzles or, or that kind of thing. Um, you may also see the protective instincts kick in. And the protective instincts will usually first show up by the dog laying right with the kid and watching the surroundings. A lot of times also, the dog will position themselves between the kid and the front, the front door to the room or the entrance to the room. This is a very naturally protective uh, behavior that is very common with the Dobermans. So you'll kind of see that. Now, as a kid gets a little bit older into toddler stages, you will see a few other changes. Um, you're likely to see the dog walk away from the child a little more often when the child starts to get to be a little bit too much. Um, you'll also see the dog start to focus a little bit more, more on the surroundings and less on the child themselves when they're in that protective mode. Um, they'll still usually sleep with their 
uh, their face facing the door and their back to the child, or sometimes right next to the child, but still always facing the door to the room. Uh, you'll also see them um, maybe a little bit more increase in some games between the two of them. Um, at the toddler age, they're starting to interact a little bit more. Uh, there'll be a lot more give and take with the relationship. And a little bit older, when the kid's kind of graduating out of the toddler stage, you might see some other changes. Um, at this point, they're starting to see, hopefully, the child as a little bit more of a leader. Um, it'll still be kind of considered a dog's friend, and they'll still bond in that sense. But you'll see him become a little bit more of a leader to the dog, um, and the dog will look up to the child. And this is also the time you really start to see bonds get really, really tight. They'll usually pick one kid in the family or one person in the family, usually it's one of the kids, where they'll want to sleep in that room at night. And they'll want to be close to that kid or cuddle them all the time or lay with them when they're watching TV. And guys, this is an amazing, amazing thing. And this is just one of the many examples as to why I think you should never... Um, tell people that a Doberman shouldn't be in a house with kids. Their relationship with kids is just unbelievable. That brings me to the two main keys of success when raising a Doberman with children. And I've talked to so many Doberman owners and this is clearly the common thread that differentiates those that are successful in developing a relationship between their kids and their Doberman and those who are not successful. The first key is acclimation of your dog to the behaviors of children. Now there's a ways you can do this. The, the first way to do this is probably the most beneficial is to socialize your dog as much as humanly possible. Never miss a family gathering where kids are present or your niece's or nephew's birthday where a lot of kids are present or friends getting together. Any group setting you can get your dog into just to interact and hang out with you where there's kids present will make a huge, huge difference. Other things you can do. Uh, when you're watching TV and you're petting your dog and they're in and out and they're sleeping or they're cuddling on you, you can uh, touch their ears, touch their paws, play with their nose, run your hands on their lips, touch them in different areas that a kid is likely to do and that way it gets them kind of acclimated to that. They can eventually even see it as kind of just almost the same as petting, like an act of affection and that's a great way to acclimate your dog to the behaviors of children. The last way, which I think is uh, uh, also another great way to go about it, is it has to do with statistics. Most bites between dogs and children happen around feeding time. And they happen specifically when the child interacts with the dog when they're eating and kind of blocks their, their food from them. So the best way to avoid this is from a young puppy age, put your hand in the dog's bowl and Make him just get used to that. He has to stop, he has to look at you, he has to wait until you move your hand to go back to eating. Do this about once a week and your dog will get used to this happening and, and will quickly shed that protective instinct um, of their food and it'll be a lot safer for your kid to be around. The second key for success is to make sure that the interactions between your Doberman puppy and your kids are always supervised in the beginning. Now as time goes by, and you start to see the relationship develop, you can maybe start to kind of get lax on that. But in the beginning, resist the urge to walk away and just leave your kid playing with a puppy. Some bad things can happen. And they may not look bad initially, but you'll be paying for them down the road. Let me give you an example. If the kid uh, pins the dog down or pinches him or screams really loudly and scares the puppy, you may end up with a dog that grows up frightened of the child. Here's the other thing that can happen. So your kid does something like that, and now maybe the puppy jumps or knocks the kid over or, or nips at him and bites him too hard because the kid maybe pinched him. Now you could also end up with a kid that's afraid of the dog. And if that happens, you're going to naturally, as the years go by, um, decide, hey, you know, maybe we shouldn't bring the dog uh, to his birthday party because he's a little afraid of him. Maybe we should leave him in the kennel today. Maybe we should put him in the garage for a little bit today. And as the years go by, what you're going to end up with is a less and less socialized Doberman. And a, and a poorly socialized Doberman is a very dangerous dog. So those are actually the dogs that nine times out of ten end up in rescue centers. So don't allow your child to get afraid of the dog. And don't allow the dog to become afraid of the child. If the dog's afraid of the child, you're going to have nipping issues and, and 
biting stuff down the road just out of fear. So to avoid that, supervise the interactions, heavily supervise them in the beginning. Make sure that their playtime stays calm, stays controlled, doesn't turn into a screaming match. Um, always ensure that the Doberman has a means of escape, that the puppy can always walk away from your child. That's a big one. Um, and always make sure that your, your child does not allow nipping or nibbling games. This can be really hard because it can be really fun and cute when the dog's a little puppy and wants to nibble the hands or nibble the feet and your kid's cracking up laughing and it looks like they're bonding. The problem with that is when the dog becomes an adult, those little nibble games now become serious mouthing and potentially biting issues down the road. So if you see that, direct the dog over to something that they can chew on, a toy, a bone, always have plenty of those present and make sure your child knows that they are not to have those nibble games with the dog for that reason. Just remember child time should never be a free for all and you should always set a good example for your child about how to responsibly interact. It can be fun, it can be enjoyable, you can play games, but make sure it's controlled, especially when the puppy is young. I've been working really, really hard to bring you new insight and new tips every single week to make your life easier raising a doorman. So let me make this deal with you. I'll keep working extremely hard to make your life easier and all you have to do is just click that subscribe button down below and that little bell next to it. And hey, while you're at it, why don't you check out some of these uh, videos you have on your screen uh, and all the other ones on my channel. I got videos about all different situations with Dobermans that might give you some great insight on how to handle things. We also like to have some fun too, so there's some good fun videos mixed in there as well. Thanks guys for watching. Hit that like button and drop a comment down below and let me know your experience raising kids with a Doberman. Thanks for watching.